Okay, how you doing guys? I hope you're doing well. Uh, this video is going to be about uh, what I, my own personal advice on how to feed your fish and the best diet to give them. Okay, this is just my opinion, this is my advice. We're gonna talk about how I suggest feeding your African cichlids and how I suggest feeding your community fish as well. And I'm gonna give you a bit of a description uh, at the beginning here about why I think that uh, it is worth paying attention to what my opinion is and uh, sort of my credentials behind the, the whole thing so that you can feel like this is, you know, legitimate advice that you can trust, okay? So let's do that. Okay, so why should you even listen to me or listen to this video? Um, so first of all, I will state to that I don't have a P, uh, PhD in nutrition or fish nutrition or anything. But what I am is a researcher and I speak to professionals and I take advice from professionals. So my interest in trying to feed fish the best diet uh, started from uh, the interest of feeding myself the best diet as a human being and why I think it's important. So I've done an incredible amount of research uh, around that. And uh, I also am very picky and I'm also um, very picky with my own nutrition and picky with my pet's nutrition. So to give you an example of that, and I know this isn't fish related, but it all ties in together. Uh, I actually make my own cat's food. Okay, this is called Hillary's Blend. She has a blend for uh, dogs as well. She came up with these really nice blends of fresh home made food with cooked food. I know that raw for cats and dogs is something that has been argued to be the best diet. Uh, and there are definite benefits to feeding uh, your animals raw. However, there are risks. So the point that she makes in this book is that when you cook and you make your food, and you blend it with certain ingredients that are fresh uh, ingredients, then you get all of the benefits of feeding raw without the risk. And she also explains the evolution of cats and uh, all these other things in order to try her best to try and inform you guys to give your pets the best, long, happy, healthy life and you can avoid um, fairly pricey vet bills. So uh, this kind of is an example of why I think uh, it might be beneficial to listen to the advice that I have to say when it comes to fish, just because of my interest and just because I've uh, done the research and uh, I've walked the miles in order to um, you know, understand these things a little bit better than the average person, okay? So that's what it is. Now, let's talk about um, what I would feed African cichlids and the feeding routine that I would give to them, okay? Okay, so to start off, uh, this is why I do uh, feed my Africans this way because I personally, for me, the look that I like with my African cichlid tanks is a mixture of many different species. Um, that's my preferred look uh, for a few reasons. I like mixing haps, peacocks, mambunas, and different species from Lake Tanzania. And the reason why I like doing that is because um, you get all of the vibrant coloration of the Malawi cichlids and you get larger sizes and bigger and smaller sizes with the mixture of haps and peacocks and mabunas. And then you get the interesting shapes, sizes and personality of the Tanzanian fish. And by being successful at combining all of these species together in one ecosystem, um, it really gives it a really um, uncomparable look, in my opinion, uh, to your fish tank. And it almost gives it an illusion of a marine tank because of the different shapes, sizes, and personality. And people that wouldn't know much about fish would walk into your house and they would think that it was a marine tank without 
it being as expensive to set up an actual marine tank. I think salt water is awesome. I got nothing against it, but it is significantly uh, more expensive. So it's kind of like the poor man's version of a salt water tank. And with the ease of keeping uh, fresh water and the hardiness of African cichlids themselves. The only way you're gonna lose Africans every once in a while is due from um, fish out competing each other and stress. So I know this isn't related to nutrition, but very quickly, one of the things that would also help you is habitat enrichment. As you've seen my Tanzanian tank uh, over here, there's tons of nooks and crannies. There's wood in there, like a jungle gym for the fish to swim around, get away from. There's tons of caves and all these other things that will help tremendously to lower aggression and losing your fish. Um, okay, so rule number one. All right, let's start with, uh, okay, so the variety I think is good. Um, one of the things that I learned about nutrition for human beings, and I'm absolutely convinced that it's no different for every other living species of animal on this planet, um, is uh, giving yourself a variety of different foods. So you want to do that for different nutrients and you want to also do that because giving your fish and yourself a healthy variety of different foods is healthy, you know, whole foods, um, gives you, uh, gives your microbiome and the healthy bacteria in your gut uh, a variety of foods which helps populate those micro that microbiome and the bacteria in your gut more and by having a bigger variety of healthy bacteria in your gut, same with your fish, um, it will strengthen your immune system, okay? And it'll also make your uh, gut a much healthier place and a more efficient place to digest your food. So, done with that spiel. Uh, day number one, you can do a handful of wafers, okay? If you have fish in there that are bigger than everyone else, uh, that one big fish is going to grab one wafer all to himself, let him be a pig. Once that he eats that one wafer, that'll muzzle him. And then put uh, an appropriate amount of wafers in the tank so that every other fish gets the opportunity to graze. So that could be five wafers, that could be six, that could be two, depending on how many fish is in your tank, the size of your fish, etc. so forth. The benefit of feeding wafers, in my opinion, um, one, it's extremely amusing to watch. It's uh, a lot of fun because it's literally like setting your tank in a NASCAR fire is the best way that I can describe it. It creates so much action in your tank. The fish are going crazy. They're running all over the place. They're fighting for the algae, for the kelp uh, wafers. And I also like it because besides the big ones that just come in and gulp one, um, the smaller ones, like the big grazers, like the Trophius and the Mabunas, they just kind of graze up and they pick at it. And that way they're not gulping up a bunch of food all at once and they're working for it. And it's also very stimulating for the fish to be able to exercise them and to trigger some of those natural instincts that they would have in the wild. And then it's fun for you to watch their natural behavior. This is also good for community fish, but we'll talk about that later on. Then, um, okay, so that's feeding number one in the morning. Always, in my opinion, uh, feed them nori, okay? So you can do wafers, so you can feed twice a day, and if you wanna feed three times a day, then go ahead. But if you feed three times a day, this here, nor uh, feeding them seaweed, is my biggest weapon to keeping African cichlids and feeding them, for a few reasons, okay? So um, you feed them the wafers first, Okay, this is day one, and then you feed them the nori once or twice. And the reason why this is beneficial is because uh, seaweed, any form of seaweed, is packed with tons of different uh, minerals. It's a highly nutritious food. Um, it's packed with fiber, and it's a vegetable protein as opposed to an animal protein. And uh, this only being one ingredient and being something that is quite dense, the fish will eat that and um, it's actually less calorically dense. So the fish will eat that and they'll be full for longer because it's loaded with fiber. And the good thing about fiber is that there's less calories and fibers don't equal, fiber does not equal calories. And this will keep them full for a longer period of time, which will also reduce their aggression because they won't be hangry. Okay, um, and this will reduce your overall nitrates in your aquarium. So it will not pollute your tank as much because plant matter in an aquarium is not as, uh, doesn't cause as much pollutants as regular fish food. And because it's only one ingredient, it doesn't create as much pollutants. And it also creates a cleaner waste. So it makes better poop 
in other words, okay, for simplistic terms. So um, this will keep your fish fuller for longer. It will help reduce aggression. You want to eliminate it, okay, because fish are aggressive for three reasons, territory, uh, breeding, and uh, food resources. And by keeping them full, you're eliminating one of those uh, three main components of their aggression, which is a huge part. Think about when you're hangry, you're grouchy, right? And your African cichlids are the same way. They want to defend that and they want to be able to get the most food as possible. And feeding them this is good because your fish don't get as much exercise in the aquarium as they do in the wild. So you don't want to get your fish fat. And I can tell when people have fish, they're on, a, I call it a McDonald's diet. They're feeding them foods that are high in fillers such as corn and soy. And that is very calorically dense. Um, and they're also feeding too much of it, which is making their fish obese in a sense because they're not getting the same kind of exercise as they would living in a very vast open area. Okay, so that's day number one, which is kelp wafers, a decent amount, so everybody's able to graze on them, whatever that looks like for your tank. Then nori once or twice a day. I only do it twice, but if you want to feed them more, then go right ahead. You can do uh, nori twice a day. Uh, the next day, I would do veggie pellets. Um, the reason I'm always doing veggie veggie is because what you're doing is that you're housing uh, fish from different that have different diet requirements. But if you feed all of your fish a higher vegetable diet, then you can keep everything together and it works just fine. Is that what you're doing is that you're still getting uh, animal products, uh, fish products in the fish's diet, okay, which is they need that, but you're putting a lot of vegetable matter in there, which is creating enough fiber for the herbivorous fish to be able to digest things properly. They can eat lots of uh, animal protein, but they need the fiber in order for it to not irritate their gut and to keep them regular so they don't get issues like bloat and all this other stuff. So, um, you know, Trophius, for example, people think that they're the all-time veggie eater. And it's true, they'll eat tons of veggies. But in the wild, they graze on rocks all day. And as they're grazing on the rocks, they're getting an incredible amount of, of crustaceans and microorganisms and animal protein inside of them. But the difference is, is that they're getting it with the algae so that they're able to get the fiber at the same time. Okay, so do veggie pellets and then nori once or twice a day. Okay, once or twice after that, depending on your schedule, depending on how much you want to feed your fish, et cetera, so forth, okay? So you got day one, day two, always nori. Day three, okay, I would highly recommend picking up uh, my pack of homemade food for a few reasons, okay? I like Northfin as far as a commercial food goes. They are probably the best um, out there that I've seen. I've had long discussions with them. They use the least amount of fillers. They uh, use the least amount of, uh, not even fillers, they use the least amount of wheat. They don't even have fillers really, um, but they need to use wheat in order to bind it and they have no choice. They have to dry it, so they have to cook it. Uh, so they kill some of those nutrients off, but then they replace it with a synthetic vitamin. This here is a whole food with no synthetic uh, vitamins necessarily needed in order to uh, make it nutritionally complete. So when you have whole foods in here, which is whole vegetables, um, all kinds of really good stuff that I put in here, natural foods that I know are good for their immune system that enhances the flavor uh, for the fish to feel like it's more palatable. That's another benefit is that it is more palatable so it feels more natural to the fish when they're biting onto it um, and eating it. And uh, all of the fish protein in here is a whole food that is raw. So it's okay to feed your fish raw frozen fish that you get from, that, that I put inside of here along with other ingredients that I order in. But uh, there's a high amount, high value of protein in here, but there's a high value of plant foods that is fused together in order for the fish to get the fiber in their diet. Okay, so um, this also really helps at keeping them regular. The benefit of feeding African cichlids this is that you break it off, okay, you put it in, the dominant ones come and they grab it and they start tearing it apart, which is really fun to watch. And then uh, the other parts sort of break up and then all the less dominant fish get to scoop up and eat everything. So the reason that I put this formula together is for all the health benefits that I just explained and to be able to mix a variety of different fish. And also it's a way for all the fish to get food to make sure that there's the least amount of 
out competing one fish to another fish. This way it seems like all the fish get an appropriate amount of food that they need in order for them not to get out competed. That doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. The odd time you're going to lose a fish because it's going to get out competed because in the world of African cichlids it's the survival of the fittest just like you know most uh, most ecosystems. Um, just because they're in a, an aquarium and they know that they're going to uh, they don't actually know that they're going to be fed every day they don't understand that. They still think that they're living in the wild and they uh, their instincts are still there to respond that way in order to survive and spread their and pass on their genetics and their genes. So this is the way that I would feed African cichlids. Higher veggie but still with protein um, uh, in there but just make sure that there's a lot of fiber infused with it. But this here, the nori, is my biggest secret weapon. I'm not saying to just feed your fish this. I'm asking, saying to add this as an additional food to your current diet or this diet that I've presented so that you're keeping your fish fuller for longer, you're reducing the pollutants in the aquarium, uh, which keeps the water quality better and uh, you're getting a lot of fiber in their diet so that they can function through their digestive system can function better and you're also offering them a healthier gut uh, bacteria population inside of them. Okay, so that's my spiel on African cichlids. I'm gonna pause this and go to community fish because I gotta put this back in the freezer before it melts in this hot fish room, all right? Okay, so now we're gonna jump into community fish, but one point really quickly that I forgot to mention about the African cichlids, and this is also beneficial for your South American fish. I love having tons of duckweed here because I actually feed all my African cichlids that every day as well to give them that extra very nutritious uh, plant food. They don't go crazy for it, but it helps them between meals because as they're bored and they get hungry again, they start grazing on that and they'll eat that and they get that um, highly nutritious uh, plant food inside of their diet. So, um, you know, so if you have some uh, duckweed and you have also cichlids, uh, you know, by all means feed them that every day and they'll, they'll love it. So with um, your community fish, they're all typically omnivores, um, which you have a little bit, it's a little bit more relaxed, free. It's also fun because you can feed them all kinds of different things. One of my favorite things in the hobby is feeding your fish. I actually really enjoy feeding my fish. I have all the fish that I have in the store every single day, I make sure that I make extra time to do it and do it because it's, it's very, uh, it's like a very mindful exercise for me. Um, and, I, and I just enjoy the relaxation that I get from feeding my fish. So again, community, uh, you can do one day. So let's just break this down really quick and I'm not gonna give you a specific formula for this one. Um, it's just kind of a variety. So uh, you could do community one day, you can do veggie pellets the next day, you can do uh, veggie wafers, which is also really fun. I've posted a video of watching my uh, planted tank with all the tetras just attacking it. That's really fun. And then the snails come after it, the uh, shrimp come after it, and everybody's just sort of picking that apart and you're bringing out that grazing behavior, which is really fun. Um, you know, you can feed them the, uh, the flakes now that uh, North Fin offers, which I do carry in the store. Um, you can add the Bug Pro, which I'm a big fan of, adding bugs to their diet because bugs is a very sustainable source of food to feed our pets and it's also very nutritious as well. Um, bugs are, you know, 70% of the world eats bugs. It's weird to us in North America, um, but it's not strange to many parts of the world because, um, you know, it's a very sustainable food and there's no way you're gonna run out of crickets and other bugs because they breed by the billions and trillions. Um, and then you can also throw in some blood worms. Blood worms are very, very nutritious. Uh, when you start feeding your discus this, it's actually hard to get them off of this because they love them so much. Uh, clown loaches love them. All your fish will love blood worms. I love feeding blood worms to my fish, so I would feed blood worms once a week and then brine shrimp once a week. So just really mix it all up, okay? All of your tanks have a formula in place to mix it all up and you can even powder this stuff up and feed nori in there several times a day as additional fiber and it won't actually pollute the water as much, right? And I have a lot of customers that do that. There's are bigger flakes because its initial intention is to feed the African cichlids, but you can absolutely put this in a uh, food processor and grind it up to a powder a little bit more and your fish will pick at this no problem. So everything I see here, give them that variety. 
Um, one thing I do, I like doing as well, is that I have a worm bin. And it's really fun once in a while grabbing out a scoop of worms and feeding it to my South American fish that I have in here, the Severums, all that other stuff. You're feeding them a worm that is gut loaded with vegetable matter because I put all my vegetable scraps in there. I put all the pulp from my uh, juicing that I put in there. So you're feeding them a very, high, very highly nutritious worm, right? The nutrients that the fish get from the worm is what the worm is eating right so it's just really beneficial for them so those are my tips about uh, nutrition i would assume that um, diet is not only important for human beings it's also quintessential for your fish it's something that i'm personally passionate about and it's something that i've really pushed into the store because i want everybody to have their fish for as long as they possibly can and the idea is not just to keep your fish surviving the idea is to keep them thriving as well so you want to be able to give them the most variety in their diet so they get the most amount of nutrients. So every aspect, every organ, every bone, every uh, part of their bodies is functioning to their fullest potential. This does not guarantee that your fish are gonna live forever, but you're giving them a much better chance. Just like you are giving yourself a better chance of living a longer, happier, and healthier life by making healthier decisions to eat better food and reducing your stress, of course. And that also ties into fish health as well, is what is their environment set up like to mitigate their natural habitat as much as possible and to mitigate their stress. And that will also help because the number one killer of fish is probably stress related. And stress related is also uh, correlated with very poor water quality. So make sure you have very good filtration and make sure that you uh, have very good uh, water quality and you stay on top of your water changes and add some plant life in there in order to better uh, filter your water as well, which we offer a lot of that in the store itself. Okay, so that's my spiel. That's my lecture on feeding your fish um, on what I like to do. And I hope that you take my knowledge and you practice the same thing. Um, in order to give your fish the best diet that they deserve. If you have any more questions about this, please feel free to call me or contact me at the store. I have lots of North Fin, I have lots of frozen food, and I always, always usually have either nori um, or uh, my homemade food on hand. So the best thing that you could feed them is the homemade, but it's not realistic price-wise. And it's also good to give them a variety as well. So I wish you guys luck with this formula and this idea. And uh, if you need anything else, just please give me a call. All right. Sorry guys, one more tip, okay? I was, I was putting everything away, concluding the video. One thing that I like to do for the community aspect of things is that I like to mix all of the uh, different North Fin foods that I feed to my fish in a pepper grinder, okay? And the uh, CK stands for uh, veggie community and krill okay I mix it with community with the community fish I mix it equal parts put it in a mason jar shake it all up mix it together then put it inside the pepper grinder and then I'll pepper grind this into another jar and then I've got a nice mixture and I'm giving them a variety every time I'm feeding them uh, commercial North Fin food um, for the African cichlids what I do is about 80% veggie 10% cichlid formula and then 10% krill so that you know there's a bit of a mixture in there as well so they're getting mostly veggie but then they're getting uh, krill in there as well so that's what I do for Africans that's what I do here's another tip this I really like this idea it kind of blends everything together and makes a nice um, variety uh, nutritional powder uh, for your fish okay last tip that's all I have for today peace and love thanks for watching